Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Miss Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. Rushed Vibes. <laughs> oh. Accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. I don't know what, what just happened. My tongue just. You messed up. That's what happened. This is doing cartwheels. I mean, but we've had a busy, we've had a busy weekend. We have. So maybe you're a little. I am a little fatigued. Brain, brain but, um, fatigued. Life fatigued. But yeah, good weekend. Busy weekend. We're back. We're in the flesh. Not that we went anywhere. I mean, we went any, somewhere, but. The podcast did not was not affected by um, our weekend, um, but we but are recording like two days earlier than we normally do, which means I can more than likely get this edited and, and uploaded, up. and I can actually go to bed Tuesday night. Which and we're recording before nine. Yes, but not in the afternoon, which is not something we Correct. get to do. Usually doesn't doesn't happen that way, but we were made a concerted effort to get the kids to bed. It was seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. I told the, the two oldest ones, I said, we're going to bed. Sovereign was not here for it. She wasn't, but she fell asleep first. She did. Solace actually fell asleep in Sonoma's room um, oh, in the uh, in the chair. Really? In the glider. Yeah. I went in oh. and she was curled up. Aww. Yeah. So then I picked her up, took her to her room. She was like, can you stay with me? And I was like, sure. She was out in like 90 seconds. Oh, I didn't even know that. By the time we came up, we... Everybody, I took care of it. Okay. I mean, I was trying oh. to I was trying to kill time because I wasn't sure. Sonoma, there's a window that if you try to put her to bed too early, then she's just up, and then you've already utilized the milk, and now you're just bonding, trying to get her to sleep. But, I haven't, I haven't done this in a while. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking a Paloma, a What's jazzed a Paloma? up Paloma. What's a Paloma? A Paloma is essentially tequila and uh, grapefruit juice. But I added some Saint Germain, which is elderflower liqueur, and some Grand Marnier. Nice. And a little sparkling water. Mm. Why are you gonna say gin? No, I, I. There's only one cocktail that I'll mix tequila and gin with, and that's not it. So you haven't had gin in a while. I had gin. I haven't been drinking as much lately. Um, no particular reason. I just haven't. Haven't really had the desire. You, you tend to go through seasons where I you... Do, where I go really, really hard and then... No, when when you... Just don't drink. Yeah, you yeah. just kind of... Yeah, I have seasons where it's like I'll have I'll make a cocktail a night and then I go through seasons where I'm just not... I think... When did I have... I had a drink yesterday. I had a glass of wine Friday. Two glasses of wine Friday. And I think it might have been either a week or two. But the bartender's competition oh, yeah. was the last time I drank. That was, what, two weeks ago? So... Yeah. Whenever you recorded with Salas. Yeah, yeah so, so that was two, two weeks. weeks. Um, yeah, I, I ebb and flow. I'm drinking black water. Black water, because you're a black man. I'm a black man, and I'm wearing black, all black, except for my shoes. So Black on black on black on gray. Not a not a um, sponsor by any means, but... But we will accept you good. if you choose to it's be a sponsor. It's all-natural alkaline infused with fulvic and polyphenol, containing 77-plus trace minerals, Electrolyte, electrolytes, antioxidants, and amino acids. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good for you. I tell people it tastes like. But the water is is literally black. Yeah. Like this isn't the color of the bottle. It's, Shay thought it was the color of the bottle. Yeah, our, the, our nanny. So the water is actually black. Oops. So it tastes like diluted unsweetened tea. So it's not the worst. It's it's not a bad taste. Um, it has a taste, and it's not a taste of water, but it's not. Although I went to pee and my pee was black. You're was lying. <laughs> That's a lie. I was just playing. It wasn't That's black. That's a lie. So it it's black. it's supposed to be good for you. They actually, they sent it to me. So That's why we they had it. They sent it to you. Hmm. Oh, so maybe we are getting sponsored. Any yeah. influencer, influencer vibes? I'm trying. That's huh? the goal. So y'all pray. Pray that more people just come and say, we're going to send you stuff and Man. sponsor your podcast. Yeah. We need it. We do. Be nice trying to retire i would definitely wouldn't retire but you wouldn't i would like the pod- i would i would like the podcast to be in a place where it could be 
financially sustainable that because the thing with the podcast you can record from anywhere so then you'd have the luxury of living anywhere we decide we want to live in a foreign country for a year with our kids and the podcast is our source of income that's something we could do yeah but you don't want to do that i would the only reason why is just trying to figure out how to work in a foreign country no you wouldn't want to work you wouldn't want your podcast you wouldn't want rush vibes to be your loan i mean i'd find something else right because that's still, just me you still want to do the corporate thing right i i do and i don't i, I think i'm not no, this is breaking news i'm not locking myself into corporate america there's there's a place i want to get to in corporate america but i'm not i'm evolving i i i'm evolving you know i i six months ago i turned 32 and that Jessica and this Jessica are different people. Uh, we've evolved. So as much as I would love, I, I, there's a part of me that's like, I would love corporate office with a view, you know, secretary, assistant, whatever. Uh, but I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind if the podcast was our soul. I'll be your assistant. If it gave us, if it gave us <laughs> the freedom to. I go get your pumpkin spice lattes every I morning, girl. Pumpkin spice latte. You know, my latte comes in the winter. That's my, like, I have a special latte that comes in the winter with Starbucks. Um, you be drinking pumpkin spice, too. Don't, don't front. I do, but okay. that's not my latte. My latte comes in the fall. I mean, in the wintertime. Uh, but, yeah, it would be cool if the podcast made enough revenue that we could be like, hey, we want to expose our kids to other cultures. We, you know, found a country that we can live in. You know, it's got Wi-Fi. We can upload and we'll record our podcast there and episode two episodes a week and then expose our kids to i don't know i i feel like you need two episodes if you go as much money as we make it as much money as we need the podcast to make for us we'd probably have to do two episodes but if that's all you're two, doing two episodes a week is if that's all you're doing it's triggering you drop episode monday and friday anxiety Oof. anyway um but yeah i'm not against it but, but i do I'm i shaking, just thinking I, about I do two episodes a week i do still have corporate desires I, yeah interesting but my corporate's not like traditional corporate what is your corporate like i feel like when people think of corporate you think of lawyers um execs not exclusively they're in there but not only i'd like to be a c-suite of like a fortune five be on c-suite no i want i want to i want to like be a c-suite for some white man's company uh okay why preferably like someone who was like known for being racist so he can roll <laughs> in his grave so think of any old i think of yeah. any any man born in I the would love, i would love 1900 early love, 1900s who I mean, built I a company the spirits um okay but uh, but um but yeah, yeah so any 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 white man who was born like the early 1900s who founded a company yeah. that, i mean so that's there's, like, there's that's a high percentage that chance that they're but why why would you waste know, your it's kind of like how you know when i went through this season where i was using old liquor bottles as um lights no as storage Rice. yeah i was putting yeah, our, our grains. grains and stuff and i intentionally put the cocoa in the jefferson bottle as a spite to jefferson oh i bet you he's he was rolling over in his grave i mean i'm pretty sure some man don't care nothing about your cocoa <laughs> oh he cared about cocoa they don't care about yours is what i said specifically anyway but no i think it would be i think it would be um it would be cool to be c-suite that'd be a racist people too much too much power they'd be living rent free in your heads i swear they do i mean i don't know ra racist people by name that i'm like i'm coming for you speaking of racist people oh, did God. you hear I, I, we were talking about this earlier did you hear about the uh, the teaser that dropped for the little mermaid did you watch it yet i have not watched it uh, i didn't even know it dropped i'm kind of disappointed but i have been i've kind of been on a social detox yeah well disney had their uh their d i think it's called d23 expo i think is that like the apple well it's, it's like um comic-con comic-con but it's exclusively for disney. for disney so they um i think that was over the weekend and uh yesterday when uh, ian and i were going out for cigars it uh it popped up on my on my twitter but this is interesting because it had come out like months ago 
that Halle Bailey was going to oh, be. Years. Or was it years? It was last year. Was at it last year? Last year. I mean, I, I know. Either last year during the pandemic. I know it had been a minute um, that it was announced that she was going to be the Little Mermaid. So mm-hmm. I figured most people had gotten, like, the outrage. They've had gotten all no. their outrage out. No. Uh, so it dropped again. Or the, the trailer dropped. Uh, and the ruckus started up again. Um, <laughs> which is just, I don't know. This is funny. Like, people who wouldn't, who don't care about Disney because it's a woke company mm-hmm. are upset that the little mermaid it's in the live black. action is going to be uh black a mermaid that's not I, not a real thing as far as i know so now look i i hadn't been you know into bermuda triangle and all that so i don't know well, what's floating around but as far as i know mermaids aren't real uh, as far as i know okay so this is me cutting you off so i went maybe it was last year the, or the, end of no let me do this end of the pandemic are you gonna do the bit i'm gonna do the bit end of the pandemic i got caught in this rabbit hole on i maybe it was on twitter i can't remember how i got there i think i saw someone post something that was on twitter on instagram and it was about mermaids so then i started like doing research about, You're doing your research about mermaids. I wanted to know because they were saying that mermaids are real. So you know, I'm I'm not. There are very few things I'll completely write off. I'm always I'll always leave like a door a little bit open. So you know, I mean, I come I'm West African, so I know about like spirit and voodoo and all this stuff. Um, so I started digging into this twitter rabbit hole it's, it was more like a what are those they're not badgers that animal they're blind but they they do holes under the ground because it was deeper than a rabbit hole um and apparently like the especially in the mole? caribbean is it a mole uh-huh. it might be uh in the caribbean like the belief of mermaids is very very strong especially in haiti so like they have these things where people like will get kidnapped by mermaids sometimes they'll like disappear and come back like five years later they might not be able to speak like people will sell their souls to mermaids mermaids will like take people as like their servants it's wild like if you get pulled into the rabbit hole and you follow the threads and you see like you're you're, you'll be like i kind of believe it so i do believe it but with that and maybe maybe it was because of the original release information that she was going to be the little mermaid that that tracked people to be like yo mermaids are black because my haitian uncle talked about his friend who had gone to the beach and then disappeared and then five years later came back and was mute like haitian especially haitians they have stories about mermaids and like people who are like they owe a debt to mermaids or they'll they'll bargain or so i won't say that i don't believe that mermaids are real um i kind of do it could be folklore it could be but you know that's what got me thinking like why are people losing their minds about this black woman playing a mermaid um because the haitians over here saying that mermaids are real and mermaids are black like mermaids might have locks and they're mermen too like it's serious like they're deep in the ocean like sebastian said under the sea that they're really there um so i so i was talking about this with sala once so then sala and i went into this this rabbit hole about mermaids too so i do think that mermaids are a thing um i think that they're probably black too so i don't ever want you taking our daughter down to sala to get her hair done again i don't want you going down there because we I are, thought she was a de- I thought she was a decent woman she is over We're here just open-minded no, over here co-signing your we're just, wild Twitter conspiracy I mean, theories. Man, could argue that you believe in black holes. Now look, shout out to Haiti. Mad love for Haiti. Mad love and you respect. Sure? Yeah. Okay. But come on. You don't believe in. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff that we. I mean, on, on the human level, I don't, we well, think we think we know. We okay, don't so know. And then what about Aquaman? Like. You th- like my thought is these characters are created, and I feel like there's th- the imagination. I don't feel that things of the imagination aren't rooted from somewhere else. Okay. 
I feel like imagination needs inspiration, like real life inspiration. Sure, like a dream or something. Yes. Okay. So I do think that the, and I don't know, if, I don't know, I know Stanley, I don't know who does DC, um, but I feel like the, I, well, I mean, Aquaman just derived, like historically, you know, you talk about pirates and they've said, you know, mer women would, you know, seduce them and they'd crash their ships and whatnot. Like, I feel like someone saw something and wasn't just like bored on a ship and was like, I'm just going to write about pirates being abducted by these random sea creatures. I think that, I think something's, it's just my thought. Y'all might think I'm weird, but I know someone out there is like, she Have might you seen be onto one? something. No, but I don't be in the water like that. Has, is there any footage on YouTube? Yeah, but it's really short. Of, of a real life mermaid. Yeah, so it's, is it, it's is always it, a short clip. So, oh, it's always, yeah, it's, it's blurry, pe- cause blurry, people, right? Because people are in such shock. Shaky, shaky footage, They're right? They're in such shock, they stop recording. Yeah, how convenient. Um, I mean, kind of like, like Bigfoot, right? Yo, Bigfoot's real, and so is the Chupacabra. All right. You don't know about so, the Chupacabra? Look. So I watched Unsolved Mysteries as a kid one night. Oh my gosh. I don't know why my parents let me watch this. So I don't know my, why we're having this conversation. My parents' room was right off of the living room, but my bedroom was off of the kitchen. So like everyone would say goodnight, and I would have to go to my room like by myself. Our room was separated by a bathroom, but it was it was a distance. So we watched Unsolved Mysteries one night, and they were talking about the Chupacabra. So the Chupacabra is this monster kind of thing. It has wings. It's kind of like a gargoyle, but it's tall, and it has wings, and it flies from Spain to New York. Like, that's its course. It flies from Spain to New York, and it will snatch people. Like, it's able to snatch people. So I was like maybe eight or nine. So it has a flight pattern? Yes. Uh-huh. It's like birds. They mig- It migrates back and forth. But this is one route. I mean, does, I'm it, sure, con- does and, it connect anywhere? Again, I was like eight when I watched this episode okay. of Unsolved Mysteries at like eleven thirty at it night. It doesn't like connect in. I will look up the Chupacabra. Google the Jersey Chupacabra, or something. You'll see it. Um, so does I watched, it have a hub, like Atlanta, or it's based in Spain? That's why it's called the Chupacabra. Okay, go ahead. Continue. So I watched this episode. It talked about how like it would snatch people, like because it can fly, so it would like snatch people from the ground, like how a hawk would snatch an animal. Uh, so then I. I had to go to bed after we watched this. So I spook, I spooked really easily. So <laughs> for like a month, I would run. Like when they'd be like, good night, I would run from the living room to my bedroom. Or anytime I was outside, I would be scared that the chupacabra was going to come down and get me. I'm going to Google the chupacabra. Because I feel like you, you, don't, you don't believe. Um, yeah, chupacabra so- is right there. Let me see it. I'm just surprised. Let me see it. Let me see it. I'm I'm pulling up. I didn't want to go to Wikipedia. Let me see it. Oh, this Chupacabra is different. So it's got variants. Oh, yeah. So it's a multiverse of. Yes, folklore. Oh, it even goes. It's been seen in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. And it was a vampire. It sucks blood. Which is reasonable. It's like a bat. It's a bat gargoyle. It's got wings and it flies. At least when, I, from what I remember from Unsolved Mysteries. And again, this is over 20 years ago. I'm 32 and I watched this like when I was eight. You know the Unsolved Mystery guys with the trench coat and the fog? And he'd be like, tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. But yeah, the Chupacabra. People would disappear and they it was the Chupacabra. It doesn't just look like a malnourished hyena. But it flies. They got no wings. The one I saw on Unsolved Mysteries had wings. Take this. So I was afraid take, to go outside. Take, take the phone. I was afraid to um, go outside. So anyways. What do you mean? Uh, grown, grown men and women on Twitter were, were upset. Going back to our initial discussion. Because but there are pictures of the Chupacabra, so you know it's real. Upset that uh, a likely fictitious creature, fictitious, excuse me, um, is being portrayed by a black woman because a movie made in the early 90s i guess animated movie Mm -hmm. portrayed a white mermaid so that was interesting to to read about on uh on twitter to see people up in arms and you know it's so crazy because for all the um and you know how i feel about the word woke Mm -hmm. but for all the claims of how stupid wokeness is um and how nonsensical it is how out of control it is Uh, You would think that you wouldn't feel 
the fire. You wouldn't fan the fire, right? You wouldn't buy into it. You wouldn't engage with it. You wouldn't acknowledge it. But people, and it's funny because I thought if woke is to assume so how super liberal. What what is the definition? The but wait, if, if, if you were to assume that, mm-hmm. I remember when people said that the libs were snowflakes. But the only people I see getting up in arms and in their feelings and emotion about stuff is people who are anti-woke, which tend to be, um, you know, Non- right, right leaning, right leaning. So I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting. I don't know. I, just, I, I can't believe that's what some people spent energy on was being frustrated about I, who's playing a mermaid. And because, I, and the thing is, you would think these people would be more upset about the fact that like they're making a live action movie about a mermaid, which is a mythical, non real for some people creature. Like, I feel like that's what they should be upset about. Like, we're exposing our kids to things that are not of God, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, don't let Sebastian end up being, like, gay in the, in the new one. I mean, oh, they're going to they're gonna go off. He had a little bit. Of, he had a lot of rhythm. It's possible. I um, but I, I, it's just I not. See. It's just not necessary. And I think, I think that's what triggered it. People were saying that a lot of the the stories about mermaid, that mermaids that came historically were from black people black countries they were i think one thing that i read it was like slaves who had been thrown overboard ships or something like either became mermaids or mermaids like saved them so that's how like the mermaid population grew whatever um so you're saying something that was coined or created by yeah africans so, was stolen yeah uh, who were black shocking that Somebody would steal. Somebody their story. would steal from uh, from so, Af- so, black people. It's, but it, it's surely that's never happened before. It's hard for me. I guess it's one of those things where it's like if Mer- if Ariel had originally been black and then the live action they casted a white woman, black people would have lost their minds. Sure. So I I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's kind of like, is it a big deal? Because you have, I mean, look at Hamilton. You have you had black. Hispanic, Asian, probably Native American, people who were not white people playing white people. And I guess that's part of history where, you know, people who are not white people play white people. Shakespeare, Shakespearean plays and all of that, even though Shakespeare is allegedly written by a black woman. Um, we can talk about that later or another episode. So I, it's like, I get that. Like, I would be upset if... I would be upset if the princess and the frog came out with a live action and Tiana is played by a white woman. I'd be like, Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. That's a black princess. So I can kind of see where the others would get upset and be like, Ariel is supposed to be white. But then I also am like, is it that big of a deal? Don't you're taking from, you're, you're taking the uh, I'm not taking contrarian side. contrarian point um, is, no I'm 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 proud actually I'm I'm very impressed because that's not that's not a typical no it's Jessica not Stem, Jessica's uh, stance to take pro no black, it, capital P R O so look I I mean you're right uh, and it's I guess you could call it a double standard but um, I mean. Well, I mean, you're talking about I mean, years of cinema. Like, how, how long has cinema been around? And how many roles have been dominated by a certain certain color mm-hmm. of people? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, so I don't think that there's anything wrong with wanting to ensure that when people play uh, certain characters, that the actor be as authentic as possible to the source material Mm -hmm. or as close to the source material as possible. Um, But at the end of the day, is it a a double standard? Sure. I'll give that to you. Oh, you're saying double standard. Yeah. But, um, but what do people say? Oh, it's not a big deal. When someone gets upset about uh, whether the, um, the people in, in the Heights, we're dark skin enough. Oh, what's the big deal? They're actors. Blah 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 mm. blah. So it, it but the, the the double standard cuts both ways, yeah. right? So like, if you gonna say that uh, people who are being represented, uh, who are historically underrepresented, 
on the big screen, finally get uh, their neighborhood, their culture represented on the big screen, that they shouldn't be upset. That is, it wasn't quite as authentic in terms of the people who were casted. If you're going to say that, well, then you can't, you can't be upset at a mermaid being black either. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it kind of works both ways, which leads me to the opinion that just don't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> just don't, just don't watch it. I if you I'm, don't, if you're not into this it, this isn't the first time Disney would have done something like this. Like when you think of Cinderella, Brandy and um, Whitney Houston, all that, I was a child, so I don't know. And you know, that social news didn't move the same way it does now, but it, it has me curious if that was something that was a big fuss like you're casting brandy this black woman with micro braids to play a princess that is white i i, I think that might be something I, i'll look into to see if anyone raised a fuss maybe maybe not yeah who knows um speaking of fuss queen is dead Oh yeah. How you feel? I mean, ashes to ashes. Yeah. I I mean I she, I don't know her. I didn't know Elizabeth. Don't switch up. No, I mean I don't switch I, up. I'm not. You had a different you had a different I reaction when it happened. I I appreciate because when the new when when the ABC news break when happened, it broke, you were like, I said the queen is dead. No, I was, no, you were like, oh, the queen is dead. Because it's the queen. You, I feel like you're supposed to gasp. Hey, my queen. Not my, hashtag not my queen. She's not, I mean, she's not my queen. But at one point she was your queen. Not your mine. people's queen. Not mine. Um, You know, I, I, I want to find a documentary that truly like breaks down things because people are upset. The crown. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think the crown, well, the crown's a TV show, and I don't think I it really breaks I'm, down. I'm not being serious. Okay, I don't. I, I need. I would need a documentary because now people are like dropping receipts about Queen Elizabeth and just the monarch. I think her death might be the beginning of like the end of the monarch. What? Let me ask you something. So, take me for example. Mm -hmm. I wake up. Mm -hmm. Six six thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. I take two kids to school. I come back. You take one kid to school. You put one kid on the bus. But one, are you right? I get one, I get one kid on. I'm sorry. I'm used to taking two kids to school. Put one kid on the bus. I take the other to school three days a week. Mm -hmm. I come back. I make some coffee. Mm -hmm. I have meetings mm -hmm. all day long. I take micro breaks. I check Twitter. You know, I'm in the NBA sports culture, memes, gifs, pop culture for the most part. Um, I pick kids up from school. I come home. Sometimes I make dinner. Every once in a while, I make dinner. Um, I talk to my wife. Sometimes I record a podcast. I don't. I feel like that's typical. That's somewhere in the realm of a typical American, right? If you have kids, you get up, you get the kids when you go, you work, you get the kids back home, you get the kids ready for bed, you eat. That's that's kind of your day. I'm not into this monarchy like stuff across mm -hmm. the pond i'm I, I don't know anything about it i'm just gonna be honest with you so how should someone like me feel about the queen being dead i mean she's she's a white woman who's dead so all white women die every day b they do um, like every one day. old white woman, she's 80. I used to work out with, I worked out with her. She died the same day the queen died. And rest, I was, was very, in, rest in peace. I was very distraught about her. She was yeah. the most adorable 80 year old woman just in the gym. I stay out. focused. Um, I mean, I don't know that I can tell you how you're supposed to feel. I have a different connection to Europe. Okay. That's um, fair. Although, indirectly, right? No, there's direct. I have, I mean, I have family members in London. Okay, okay. Um, my Auntie Lena lived in London. Okay. Yeah. She, Shout out to Auntie Lena. Yeah, she lived in London. She loved London. That's my boo, um, man. We, we got, I gotta go see Auntie Lena. Yeah, you do. You should go by yourself and see her. I think. No, I'm not going there by myself. Um, I'm not going to New York by myself. You don't think you'll make it back? I just don't want to go to New York by myself. You think you're I need, I need a veteran with me. Anyway, uh, my cousins are there. They all rock with me. Yes, they do. They love you. Georgia didn't wish me happy birthday. Oh my gosh, get 
nor did nor I have need, I gotten my back ordered birthday gift. I need you to. I need her to watch the podcast. I know she's not watching the podcast. She hasn't. Loretta, Loretta, I, Loretta will rock with me because she actually tells me like, and then Georgia, which is weird, is Georgia. I think wished me happy Father's Day. She did, but didn't wish me happy birthday. Which I guess she just doesn't know when it and is. Loretta wish you happy birthday and not happy Father's no, Day. No, Loretta does happy. Loretta does both. I think yeah. actually, Loretta's actually. Um, I didn't think she's very sentimental. <clears throat> she's very good about. She was not the cousin I thought that I would hit it off with initially. Yeah. We um, seem like opposing personalities, mm-hmm. and I didn't. But I was a different. I was a different man when I met her. So maybe that my evolution and maturity mm-hmm. has has played a role in that. But, but no, I. I'm sure part of it is you know, I would say of cousins, she and I are the closest. So it's probably significant in terms of like the relationship she and I have. And how she sees how you and I are and how you are with, you know, her nieces and nephews, even though they're her second they're her cousins. Her nieces. They're her um, cousins. They're her second cousins. But I mean, and we're we African. Gotta, we got to so stop. We got to stop this lie. We're African. Like my Auntie Hetty. I thought she was my auntie. Found out she's my mom's cousin. So she's really my cousin Hetty. But she's my auntie. If I called her Hetty or cousin. <laughs> anyway. She better not come right here because I'm calling her what her mama called her. I'm going to call her Hetty. No, you're not. Yes, I will. Even your older cousins you call cousin. Hmm? When you greet your cousins that are old, because you have older cousins. Oh. <laughs> so Mark older. and Mark and Lamont are old. Okay. No, cool. I'm not, I wasn't even thinking about them. I was thinking, thinking of the about? ones that are older than them. But they're, I mean, they're all old. Like, I call Lyle Lyle. Yeah, but like. You I call Mark other, Mark. I call yeah. Lamont Lamont. You have other cousins that you call, you were, you say cousin before you say their name. I'm cool. I'm not going to put it on blast. But you, you just put Let's circle you. back. I'm, you don't, you're not to have any feelings about the queen being dead because the queen doesn't affect you. Doesn't affect anybody over here? I mean, her, what, her granddaddy ran this place for okay. a season? The city I'm talking, you about, live I'm in talking is, about people here now. The city you I, live in is named after that I do her know. great-grandmother. That I do know. That little bit of history I do know. So. But anybody here now, walking the earth now. Affected by queen? Yeah. Yes, I mean, if you're English, you're affected by the. I mean, queen. walking in, in the United States now. If you're Canadian and you're walking in the United States, yes, because Canada is a Commonwealth. Okay. So no Americans. I mean, in terms of the allyship that the like that the United Kingdom has with America, yeah, that's significant. Okay. Um, and I mean, the whole fact of the matter is, America is founded because oh, yes, British I- people were ta- were not being good to some of their citizens so they left i also know that that little part but i'm just saying i can't tell you to have feelings i come from a a country that was colonized right and in recent history became independent from the british yeah i just want to make sure that i'm not like missing anything no i mean that would be like the president of china dying and you being like well the former the former uh, prime minister got japan got assassinated And they were ago. taken aback. Because the gun was like 3D was printed gun? or I something. Thought he was, I thought he was stabbed. Nah, I had got shot with a... Oh, I can't remember. So many people are just dying. No, it's the the, the the Arabic writer. The Middle Eastern Oh, Salman writer. Rushdie. Yes. Yeah, he got stabbed. He got stabbed. Yeah. He lived, right? He's good? Uh, he is... They haven't talked about him since it happened. He hasn't died, I don't believe. But yeah, he was in... He was in yeah, you don't From what need, I heard, he's in rough shape. You don't need to care about the queen. Um, I find I personally just have an interest for the monarch, for monarchy. Um, part of it is there are monarchies in Ghana, like you know the Ashanti region. There's an Ashanti king. Um, so I've grown up hearing stories about that. I know about the the battles between you know various Ghanaian tribes and, and, mm. and the British. Um, like Queen Elizabeth did visit. Ghana after their independence. Um, I think one of the first episodes of The Crown, they they feature, like, I think she and Kwame Nkrumah did a, a waltz. And Ghanaians were kind of upset because it didn't truly depict, like, the truth, the fact of the matter when Ghana got its independence. Um, and, I mean, I have feelings towards the, the, her, and her establishment with how Ghana was treated upon getting its independence. Um, and I feel that they, I feel like Europe, I feel like specifically the United Kingdom and the crown played a role in the coup 
that J.J. Rollins led to take over and essentially get um, Kwame Nkrumah. Um, what's the word where you have to leave? He had to go. He had to go to another country. The word's not coming to me. Extradited. Huh? Extradited. He wasn't extradited. He fled. Um, there's a formal word when you have to flee when you're a leader of a nation and you have to flee to another nation because oh, of a asylum. coup. Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's not the word I'm looking for, but he, en- he ended up having to go to Seychelles because of that. But when Ghana got its independence, Ghana didn't know what it was doing. And I felt like, um, did I say expedited or extradited? I think you said extradited, but you could okay. have said expedited. I hope uh, I meant extradited it's in case shipping. anybody, it's not, shipping. It's not fed- FedEx rates, but historically, um, Ghana reached, so every like Europeans left, the English left, and then Kwame Nkrumah kind of asked them to come back to assist with things. And when they came back, they essentially robbed Ghana and put Ghana in the hole. And is part of why that this country that should be that I mean Ghana is great in areas now, which is why a lot of people are flocking to Ghana. But it could have been greater had Britain done a better job of supporting a nation that chose independence. And independence was in 1960, 1960, maybe 1958, in that range, in that window. So, you know, in people's lifetimes, there are people who were born in Ghana's independence yeah, and are mom, still my mom was 55. Yeah. My dad was born in 47. Yeah. So, Dang, you old. and granted, granted, wokeness wasn't a thing back then, but like the nice thing to do would have been let's help this country thrive but that's not what you'd want and then you know they're just the simple the simple things that you know europe has done not europe specifically but the united kingdom has done to annihilate countries so people are upset i mean and it's not even just like i mean i showed you that the tweets of that one it's not even just like african countries i mean the irish are upset indians are i feel like the indians are getting up there the Australians, not the white Australians, like the original Australians. Um, so, but I appreciate, I just appreciate monarchy as a whole, not specific to Europe, but they're the most prominent monarch in the world. There are lots of other kings and queens around the world that are, you know, just not as prominent. But I think because the UK, Britain, England, whatever you want to refer to them as, as, has established itself as a power player. I mean, she, I think they said it's 1 billion people that are still under the crown Mm. in the world. Mm. That's insane. 1 billion is a lot of people. It is a lot of people, especially when the world's population, I believe might still be in the seven or 8 billion people. So if 1 billion of those people are still under that, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Well, and I don't know that Britain has ever truly done anything to make amends for the wrongs that it did to everybody in the world. Well, probably not, because according to. Uh, hold on. Professor, I'm, I'm trying to oh, no. Uja Uju. Anya, professor of uh, applied linguistics. Uh, I don't know what school, but she went off. So uh, her tweet, I guess this is, uh, the queen died on the 8th, right? Sure. So uh, her tweet, not much longer after news broke, because it's 9, 12 a.m. Screenshot of the first time I've actually ever like screenshot of something that I knew was at risk of being deleted. Said, I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. And then she followed that tweet up and said, if anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family and the consequences of which those alive today are still trying to overcome, you can keep wishing upon a star. F, and another tweet. I uh, she was responding to somebody who obviously felt she should have said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, F you and your def- deference to genocidal colonizers, that wretched woman and her bloodthirsty throne have effed generations of my ancestors on both sides of the family. And she supervised a government that sponsored the genocide. My parents and siblings survived. May she die in agony. Whew. I believe this uh, professor, I think she's Kenyan, maybe. 
No, she's Nigerian. Nigerian, excuse me. Um, so, yeah. So, there was a lot of that going on. Um, a lot of people who are have uh, strong feelings mm-hmm. towards colonialism uh, felt like they were kind of waiting. Felt like people were like circling, waiting for this moment to just tap dance mm-hmm. on the grave. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Gotta, it's it's crazy. Like you, to me, because again, no context, right? Like I don't think about any like everything you just but you're you also just not described. A history person. I'm not a history person, and I don't have any direct connection to their their dominance, their mm-hmm. influence, and with all the things that they've done. So obviously, I've, I'm aware of the Queen, you know, and their their drama when Harry and Meghan got married, and her uh, conversation with uh, Mariah Carey was very. Uh, and who was, who was also racially ambiguous. Who was all, and, they, and they talked about that. In appearance. Yeah, and, and, and they actually discussed that. And she talked about how, Megan, Megan did, um, talked about how, I think, I don't know, uh, paraphrasing, so I might not have it all correctly because I only, I'd listened to it while I was doing something else. But like, um, for the first time when she married Harris, when she was actually like, felt like a black woman because she was treated as such. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas before she was kind of just, she was just Megan. She was just Megan. Megan. Um, and then you got, according to her, people asking like, well, <laughs> do you think the ba- how dark do you think the baby's going to be when he's born? like, can you imagine like, just imagine everything else that's going through you, right? As mm-hmm. when you're pregnant, late stage pregnancy, um, having the baby, having just had the baby postpartum kicks, like, Hey, yo, how, how is he gonna get darker? You gonna be like, well done, medium rare. I wish he'd come. <laughs> out, I wish he'd come out browner. <laughs> like, I wish grandma's DNA had just hopped like, over. How is that? A, how is that a legitimate but question that somebody has? A, assuming it's real, because Megan is the one who said it happened. That's a privileged question. But that's a, like, that's a question of privilege. But still, wow, y'all really ask. So I get it. Well, some of it, I, I, I get people not being like, like distraught some people that the queen has passed because you know there's smoke there's fire but i was i was caught off guard i was blown away i was like wow and of course you know twitter is just they don't care about anything so you know the memes and the jokes and stuff were fine so but i was just curious because you are i mean the, the you well versed yeah. in history so i wanted to see you know that we're, we're a few days removed from it um you know what your what your thoughts and opinions I, are on i mean part of me doesn't hold much to her because what was she supposed to do? Like, these are things that have been established from predecessors of hers. You know, she didn't implement slavery. She didn't, you know, do all the things. So what what was she supposed to do is, is my, my first question that would have had people, I guess, sympathetic upon her death. What could she have done? I don't know. That's, that's something that I actually plan. I do plan on making the time to do research to figure out all the atrocities that may have taken place during her reign. I mean, 70 years is a long time. What she did do, what she didn't do, where she, people felt she could have done better. I really hope someone either has a list of documentaries together or is putting together a documentary. But I think the hardest thing for people when it comes to the monarch, if you're not English, is what's the point of a monarch? Because here, you know, we have presidents, we vote. You know, there, they have this family that has been running this kingdom for thousands of years, if so. And right now, they're kind of just figureheads because they do have the prime minister and all of that. Right. But, you know, it's not cheap running, like supporting, the, which is also why they're very particular and why she was very strict about, you know, what is to be said, what is to be done, how we're supposed to appear because you, she didn't want to upset the people who are essentially funding their lifestyle. But, you know, I guess as Americans, we don't have a lot of experience with monarch, mon, monarch control. Like that's not how the structure of our country is. You know, our country was built for independence. Um, and, no one person was supposed to have that power. Now there are other countries in the world that do have kings, queens, princesses, all of that stuff. But I think the English one is the one that we've been most exposed to. Uh, we 
we knew I grew up knowing about Diana. Like I remember seeing when she died and people making like the sadness in the world. My mom was a big deal. Yeah, I remember. I, remember. Yeah. I liked Princess Diana. I don't know why she was a princess. I didn't know what I knew about Charles having an affair. I didn't know what an affair was, but I knew that Charles had an affair and people were upset because this was Princess Diana. Like you don't do that to Princess well, and Diana. It's just the way she died. Yeah. It was and I think very we, tragic. We also have a society like, you know, you grow up reading fairy tales. I mean, we talk about Disney princesses. So like the fact that these are real people, they're real there are real kings and queens and princesses and princes. And, you know, I think that's something that just intrigues people, just the traditionalism. But, you know, I was listening to something on, I was watching um, an interview as she was sick um, or as she was, you know, cycling out um, as her battery was depleting. I don't know the problem, whatever. Um, sorry. <laughs> that part. Um, and this, girl, this English girl, this guy was interviewing her and he's like, you know, what's your thought on the queen? And she was kind of like, I mean, it's sad. Like she's dying. Like, I feel oh bad. yeah. So, I saw that. I feel bad she's dying. But I mean, you, you got the Prince Andrew issues that were just kind of brushed under the rug. Like one thing that I took away from all of this is that you realize that it doesn't matter how much distinction a family has. Dysfunction is almost defaulted in being human. You can run a, you can be on a platform that has you on a throne for over a billion people in the world and dysfunction will still reside. Only if you allow it. I feel it's like, I feel it's like a, it's like a cancer. I mean, Andrew is the stuff that Andrew got into that's how, how do you not allow that that's a dysfunction within him if you he had affiliate how do you have a print the a prince of england affiliated with jeffrey epstein it's not, I can say so, that might not be a good look <laughs> and, and how do you not allow that that's something that he was taking part of so i don't know it's just it, it it'll be i think I'm curious to see how Charles will run. I know he's not going to be around long. I mean, his mother held that. Th he's 73. Like how much, how his mother ruled for 70 years. I mean, they, I mean, she lived in 90, 96. Okay. So even if he lives to 96, that's only a 20 some odd year rule. Only compared to her 70. Last thing you held for 20 years. Myself. Exactly. No job, no title, no nothing. That ain't, it ain't no walk in the park to do something for 20 years. I'm just saying, he's not going to rule. And people don't didn't even like him. Like, a lot, of, like a lot of Brits wanted them to just skip a generation his and hands, go to William. His hands look like little sausages. His I've fingers never, look like little... I've never looked at his hands or had reason to look, look at like his hands. Like a little bratwurst. Like, bro, what you, what you doing? Stress? I mean, Harry's like, the only one I like. And Harry, I mean, so many people have to die before Harry can get the throne. So, yeah. um, I mean, if this was Game of Thrones. Stop. You can have a red wedding. I mean, there are ways that this could happen. Um, yeah. I'm not condoning the elimination of small children. I know, just got a video uh, I just, taken, I taken just, down because you. I just said I'm not condoning that. But um, but no, the monarchy is interesting. The it, thoughts it, and opinions expressed. By Jessica belong to her and her the kids herself. Are cute. The kids are cute. The They're monarchy, not indicative of the greater views of us here at Rush Vibes. The monarchy is interesting. Anyway, let's let's move on. So, uh, uh, in terms of um, speaking of breaking news this week, right? Um, Friday, the day after the Queen died, the very next day, NBA 2K23 dropped. I don't care. So, no, wait, wait. So it was a 2K holiday, right? This happens every year, usually in September, right? Um, and uh, I'm going to take you through a brief history of NBA 2K. Very brief, because I know your attention span for this is like 15 seconds. It's going to be a little bit longer than that, but stay with me. Um, there used to be a dominant in uh, basketball simulation franchise called NBA Live. It's made by EA Sports. I know, I Electronic know. Arts. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh dominated um until the late 90s early 2000s when uh, i think the dreamcast was out was a game system i know the dreamcast. and uh, okay please 
Okay. I know more than you think. And I uh, no, I, well, I don't because it's not stuff. You never have these discussions with me. So how am I supposed to know what you know? So again, I mean, if you if you know, just say I know, and I'll continue ahead. So NBA Two K basically came up uh, was you know was like the the young upstart studio. Um, can't I think take take two? I think is the is the actual studio behind it. Um, kind of came up and basically lapped NBA Live to the point where NBA Live just doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently there's a team building, developing something, but they haven't been significant in years. It might even be almost a decade. Like, the last good live might have been 2010, 2011. Like, it's been a minute. Um, And so a really popular... One thing that NBA 2K did differently is that they added a role-playing element to the basketball game. Hadn't really been done. NBA Live was just like simulation. You you play, you can play an individual game. You can have a franchise. You can do playoffs or whatever. But 2K started uh, what's called My Career. where you And they drafted out like this whole story, scripted it. They'll get actors to come in. Michael B. Jordan's been on there. Um, where you have a player who, you know, is, is going through adversity and somehow makes an NBA roster and then it's about building your career from there. So that's actually become a, probably the most popular element of the game. So whereas a lot of basketball video, a lot of video game, a lot of basketball video game players uh, of old just wanted to play simulation. Now it's more so about the, my player. And so what happens is, is when the game comes out, a lot of dudes who buy it, all they care about for like the first week or so, the first, definitely the first 48 hours is building their, my player up. Cause you have to, you have to complete, um, missions. You know, you have to buy a virtual currency to give yourself better attributes. So there's a video that surfaced, um, Friday. There's this dude who apparently, and it's weird because I'm assuming the mother of the baby, cause there's a baby involved. The mother of the baby was actually before recording the video of this dude playing 2K. And she said, I'm so sick of 2K. Like I'm not even playing with, with, the, with an emoji, a frown emoji face. So dude had the headset on and was playing 2K. Baby was to the right of him in the, the swing or the glider. And there was like a bottle of like, not the, not like formula, but like the stuff that you make the formula with. Like now, I, I guess, do you ever, or like the full, Mm-hmm. bottle of formula not like the little form and had a nipple on it and so the baby it was like in the baby's mouth as the swing is swinging and so this was what i was playing on my on my ipad before we we started so i'm gonna play it so you can actually watch it and then we'll i'll get your reaction because I'm, I'm curious how you feel about it I'm bro, sick of decay at this point now, point, like bro. seriously. Like the game really be that serious that you got you your own, you got that no you got your bro. daughter drinking out the whole bottle. Like that hold on, hold on, game hold on. that serious. Get back on that shit sad. And I'm getting boys like that. Just keep her like just keep her right there. No, dude. What you mean? That's that the game that serious that you couldn't get up. So a couple of different things happening there, right? A couple, of, I, I counted at least two. So I'm curious though, how you, uh, <laughs> how you feel about the uh, effect that NBA 2K is having on our, on our, <laughs> our fathers. I mean, this is why I don't like video games. Okay. Because... That's that's a baby. There's no reason why that 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 bottle's the same size as a baby. Inexcusable, one hundred percent. But like some of you dudes, why why are you lumping me in? Because you no you you be in your your video game moments too, and you you annoy me. Um, I play video games, yes. No, but sometimes like the timing of it, like like this man's not. This is not a teenage boy. This is a man who has it's a, a grown, kid. It's a grown dude. I don't know probably if it's his old, wife or his girlfriend, but he's he's you've got a kid. Like you don't. This it's just not okay. It's it's irresponsible to me. It's selfish. 
it's just it to me like that's it's just unattractive mm. it's just anything and i'm maybe i'm weird but i feel like anything that has that powerful of a draw on you or mm. a pull on you it, it it's disgusting to me like what if that thing is a woman that can be disgusting too okay I'm just checking just I'm just not one for I don't like I don't have an I personally feel like I don't have an addictive personality mm. I don't like addictive things that people become addicted to mm. um, which might explain why you take you have seasons where you don't drink yes I don't I, I don't I am very much so the type of person I don't like anything to be I don't like to be dependent on things and people I don't like to be dependent on anything anything anyone so if I, I i try to i almost challenge myself to prove that i'm capable of doing things like i've gone on sober kicks just to prove to myself that i can go without drinking um so if i ever when i when for me this is me just speaking on me when i find myself doing something or appreciating something too much i guess i withdraw from it because I don't, I and maybe it's I don't want to have like dopamine releases attached to that. I just don't like anything controlling my mood. My th- I, I'm very weird like that. Except Amazon. Even I, I even withdraw <laughs> I, from Amazon. I'm, I'm playing. Like when I I will go through phases where I recognize that I'm going through something, which is why I'm spending a lot on Amazon, and then I will retract. And I myself. wish you could. I wish you could acknowledge it before you started going through something. I mean, by the time I, I wish rec- you could. Re- by the time I wish I'm you could recognize it. when you're on the cusp. Of no, sometimes going through I have something. to be in it to realize that. I mean, I'm, I know I'm going through. I'm something. being I'm being facetious, but um, I'm just saying for the sake so of our I, bank account. I don't like video. I would say I don't like video games because of you. <laughs> okay. Because I actually played video games. Like in college, I played video well, when games. I, when we started dating, you were playing the little, yeah. the little bakery app yeah, game I on played, your phone. I, I played, um, was, it, was it Rockstar? Rock, rock Band. Rock I played band. Rock Band. I played um, Call of Duty. I played video games. Mm-hmm. Like I would play with guys. Um, oh, would you? I mean, I lived in a dorm. We were in college. Mm. It was guys who had the video oh, games. Oh, you didn't live in an all-female dorm? No. Oh. We were in a co-ed dorm. Oh. Okay. You're just playing Call of Duty with dudes, huh? Yeah. 12, 12, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning? No, I would never do it that late. Mm, okay. Unless good. all of us are playing. Like, oh. I played Rock Band late at night. Well, that, be, like, um, on a Friday night yeah, and everybody's that, play, involved in that rock kind band, of game. that's Rock Band. That's different. But yeah, I played video games. What was the the little the Michael Jackson joint? Where, oh. was, what was it? Was it Just Dance? Dan- just, just Dance, dance. Yeah. yeah. those were cool, too. Um, But you overdid, you overdid it for me. Okay. Like... And when we first started dating, I like, you know, you're in the beginning dating stage, so you, you'll tolerate just about anything. Um, but like as our relationship progressed, you just did it too much. And when someone does something too much, that turns it off for me and I lose interest in it. Mm. Like my I used to be really into technology. Mm. You were more into technology and that was overwhelming. So I backed off and I lost interest in technology. Mm. In term, like I used to jailbreak phones. I used to torrent. I used to do all of that stuff. Mm. But that was what you you did when we were dating. So I stopped doing that because it was like both of us. We can't both do that. It's mm. not sustainable. Yeah. Why would you ever want to have anything in common with somebody? It's interesting. But continue. No. I said you <laughs> overdid it. No, but. I, when someone overdoes something, I I withdraw. That's fine. Yeah, and you said you just weren't into it, so I was yeah, like, yeah. Why would you ever want to have something? I, mean, I would, just, but you were overdoing it, and okay. you overdo you overdid video games for me. So that's why I don't like video games. Like I genuinely like. There's like a gnat in my face. That's God, by the way. But go huh? ahead. That's God. You don't like ugly. Keep going. No, the gnat has been floating around here. <laughs> that's God's waiting. God was waiting on his moment to anyway, strike. Anyway, um. Like you, for me, and mind you, keep in mind, I, I didn't grow up with a dad who played video games. Uh, I think my brother played Neither video games, I. but I, I was out of the house by the time my brother started playing video games. So, and he doesn't do them now. So f- a lot of it is cultural, but it's like, I see someone playing video games. And I'm like, like there's dishes in the sink. There's, mm-hmm. you know, a diaper that needs to be changed. There's this, that could be done. That, that could be done. Um, well, that, I mean, you could say that for anything. Though. You can. I, yeah. I don't dispute that. But you don't. But video games is such a recreational thing. 
Like Used if I walked by your office and you were reading a book, I'd be like, oh, he's reading a book. But when I walk by your office and you're holding a controller and like there was one day, like maybe a month ago, Solace and Sovereign were arguing. They were fighting about something. And I was upstairs, I think, putting Sonoma down for a nap, thinking that there's an adult in the room with them. Mm -hmm. And I come downstairs and you're not there. They're arguing. You're in your office and you got a controller in your hand. And I'm mm -hmm. like, in my head, I'm like, bruh, the video game is that important? No, there's a couple. So let me allow me to respond. Um, number one, I don't understand. So it's two things. Number two, number one of two, I don't understand the difference between whether I'm reading a book, whether I'm on my computer, whether I'm facing my monitor, because at that point you don't know what I'm doing, right? I could be, I could be playing solitaire or I could be looking up technology stuff. You don't know what I'm doing. I don't think I'm, I, I've always struggled to understand why it matters what I'm doing, because obviously in my mind, I think that I have at least a free moment to do whatever I want to do. So I feel like it shouldn't matter in the moment, whatever I'm doing, because in my mind, I feel like I have the time to do it. Now, if you're saying, if your beef is, I feel like you shouldn't, you don't have free time right now because there's something else that demands your attention or should demand your attention. That's one thing, mm -hmm. but your beef is specifically with video games. And I don't think that's fair because that's my time in my mind. So yes. if there's, but if there's, so if there's a disagreement with that, that I would 100% be okay with because you're saying, hey, you should be doing this. This really needs to be done. So it doesn't matter whether you're reading a book, whether you're tying, whether you're organizing your shoes, whether you're researching stuff on the web, this should be, this should take precedent. But if that's not it and it's just, oh, he's playing video games, I don't think that that's fair mm -hmm. personally. But it's kind of moot, not moot, but we we had a discussion around video games and I kind of told you where I was at with it. And that was something that I don't remember how I said it, but I think it, it basically came down to you, how you need to adjust, but I'll do my best to not let it take me completely away. Like it won't, I don't want it to ever get to that point. Um, so the thing with the girls is I'm not a big believer in every single tiff that the kids have, we have to intervene. I'm not either. Okay. So as a parent, right, as your partner, as their father, based on my judgment of what I heard the dispute was, I felt like they were capable of working it out. So I was allowing them to do that. So again, if you had come down and I was reading a book, you probably wouldn't have been upset, right? Or maybe not as upset. But because it was a video game and you have this, I won't call it a vendetta, but you just have this thing where you don't appreciate them. You don't think that mm -hmm. they're valuable and that they're maybe even toxic. That's why you're upset. You didn't even ask me, well, why didn't you, why didn't you come step in with the girls? Like you didn't even, it didn't dawn on you to even ask that. You just saw that I was playing video games. So you just got upset. So I feel like if you, if we had had that discussion, I would have said, well, I was trying to let them work it out because we're not always going to be around. They have to learn. Like we said, Savi's going to have to learn or Salas needs to learn how to make friends when she's in environments where she's unfamiliar with people. They need to learn. Salas specifically as the oldest, like how to diffuse situations. So I was letting them do that. So I could have just been in there sitting. Mm hmm. For all, for all you know, it just so happened. Yeah, I was playing a video game. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I know that I find video games to be immature. I just think that it's not an activity that an adult who isn't employed by video games should be doing. This is me. If you take offense to this, I'm sorry. That's just my perspective of it. I mean, you, I mean, keep in mind, I didn't grow up in a household with males who played video games. So that's one perspective of it too. I think I also have resentment because there have been times that, oh, let me just finish this quarter. Let me just finish this game before we could do something else. I mean, there have been times where you have been more fixated on finishing a game than us having sex. Only as fair. It, 
What do you mean you don't think that's fair? I don't think that's fair. One, I don't think that's fair for you to say on the podcast, number one. I mean. Because this is something that we've discussed in private. This isn't a, this isn't a beef that I you've mean, sometimes discussed with me in private. Sometimes the air flows when it flows. Well, I got the editing power, so. Okay, then speak, edit it out. Speak freely. So it's like. Hey, you trying to add, This is like ambush number four. I mean, it's a new season. First, what, what was the first one you came out? You, you came at me about was the uh, Vegas thing, where you felt like I was, I was trying to paint you in a certain way as a wife because I was playing about oh, you taking yeah. me to the strip club and you started the next Yo, episode had, like. And you know how I, I forget like, topics. I had kept like, that top of mind. I was like, next episode, I'm gonna drop this. You had nugget. your Kanye uh, Mike Myers moment. <laughs> so David doesn't care about black women. <laughs> So it's like you got to understand that these acts can create the it these acts can create resentment within someone else where if it's like there are things moments that we could be sharing and I think you quickly forget how quality time is significant to me uninterrupted undistracted and yes it can be selfish to expect someone's undivided attention but that is something that I take I very that, personal. I don't think that's selfish. So anything that, anything that competes with my ability to get quality time with yeah. someone that I want quality time with becomes an enemy to me. It's mm. almost like how the body fights a virus. Mm. That it, it, it's not something I can appreciate. It's me now I'm on the defense with that thing because that's becoming an obstacle. Mm. And I've that's how I've, grown to view video games with us mm. from when we were dating to into our marriage i mean when we got this house you'd be upstairs in the loft playing games mm. while i'm downstairs and i was convinced we were going to get divorced because we were on two different sides of the house that that's just how i'm conditioned like i or how i desire like when i want when i expect that this is a quality time this is our time i don't want something in between Especially not something that can be done at another time. Like, but can it? It's because it sounds like you don't have a tolerance for it happening at any time. I think, because, and I know, and I know back then you, you didn't. I think because the the bad taste was putting my put in my mouth, so it didn't matter. It was too like it was too. We were too far in. Like I, it the bitterness was already built up. It wasn't like oh, I just do. One, the games are really long too. Like it's ten minute quarters, it's and not, then it's, it's always bad. like you can never just pause. Like I pause I a lot. Games I pause a lot now. By the way, now because you have three kids. Well, I pause a lot before I had three kids. Because you have two kids. <laughs> I don't know. I just I pause a lot because there are things, other things, even outside the kids, the things I got to do. So here, so here's the thing. I, um, let's circle back. Let's just no, 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 no. Because no. I don't want it to be like I'm coming for you. Well, you you did. I did. And that's fine, because I'm, I'm I'm well capable of taking care of myself. But I'm going to do one thing that I promised myself I was going to do a whole lot more of going forward in my Call life, because I'm getting ready to be 35, 35 years old. And you always, and I actually have to thank you for this, because you say I'm almost too humble to a fault. Mm -hmm. So annoying. this is me saying that, yes, I enjoy playing video games. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to enjoy playing video games until I don't. I don't know when that'll be. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll be in my 50s playing video games. Maybe I'll be in my 70s. Maybe I'll stop when I'm 40. But let me tell you some of the things that I've accomplished while I've been playing video games. I graduated high school, first generation college student. I got a master's, I'm a manager. I got three beautiful kids, a gorgeous wife, a house that I've been living in and paying for sometimes by myself but most times together with you okay as a black man I make more than like a higher percentage of people who look like me in this country and I've done all that playing video games so uh, I think that we can have um, differences of opinion mm -hmm. in which how someone chooses to spend their free time. And if there is something that you feel is legitimately taking my 
attention away from this family, then yeah, we need to have a discussion about it. But if it's something that I'm doing when I do have a spare minute, that is no different than you watching a reality TV show at night or surfing your phone. Because you do do that at times. You do surf your phone. I also go to bed. You also go to bed, yes. But sometimes I don't want to get too much into each other. But um, there were times where I delayed playing video games until after everybody went to bed because I figured if I spent time with you during the day, then, okay, then I can play at night because it's something I enjoy doing. Some people put puzzles together. Some people put cars back together. I enjoy playing video games. And it's at points, it can be therapeutic for me. So I I didn't feel like I should have to sacrifice that like completely. Mm Mm-hmm. Just because I got married and my wife wasn't very fond of it. I did think it was important to spend time with my wife. And then after she was in bed or kid or kids were in bed, then I could have my time. And that's usually how it goes. Like if there's something I want to learn about or a video I want to watch, usually I wait until after people have gone to bed because there's just so much to do during the day. Um, And I don't even remember what point I was making now because I feel like I want to fall on a tangent. But, um, I just want you to know that it may not have been the example that you had growing up Mm -mm. a man playing video games, but it doesn't make me any less of one because I do, because if I I know it doesn't, I'm just telling you where I'm coming from because you, you you can't help, but it, it can't help, but feel like a comparison when you say my dad did this, but he didn't do this when you're speaking about how I do things. Mm -hmm. So you're not my dad. No, I'm not, but I'm telling you it, it feels as if it's, an implied comparison. This is me telling you how it feels. So whether it is or it isn't, I don't think that it is, but in the off chance that it is, I don't want what I have done, what I continue to do day in and day out. I don't want that to be forgotten either because I've done pretty well for myself Mm -hmm. and I've got a lot more to do. So and video games aren't going to be, aren't going to cost me anything. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Playing video games or not playing video games. That's basically what I wanted to say. So, um, but this is egregious. Mm -hmm. Like even in my most immature first married days, playing video games instead of having sex with my wife, like I would never do that. Cause that's one is dangerous. It is. Because the baby should never, even if you only have like. And that's a, that looked like a newborn. By newborn, oh yeah. I mean the first two months yeah, of Yeah, but even if you only have like whatever the 48 ounces that they're supposed to have in the bottle, there's too much air. Like, there could be too much air in there. And, but see, this is a problem. This is a beef I have with you because I was waiting to see if you would call it out. You didn't say nothing about the mama that was recording the video. I mean, I, that was going to be my next one. Was point. it? You should have led with that. Because there's no way you would have sat there complaining about me not giving attention to the baby and recording but, it for TikTok. But what you have to... You would have slapped I, me in the back of my head. I would have been upset. Cut the power cord to the Xbox. And you I probably would have... I probably would have snatched my baby and left. And you would have left. But my thought is, she... This is probably... The recording is probably her being fed up and trying to capture it because sometimes you can communicate with someone that they're doing something too much and not... And they don't see it. So her... That is probably like... This is me making evidence that you are doing the most right you now. You sure you want no, you want I that mean, moment w- to be you I sure you want to sacrifice my baby? I was going to say you sure that's the that's the time because to do it. That baby could be cuz that bottle was huge and it was probably full when he attached it to her. Like attempted attempted at innovative thinking but still dangerous. Oh, um, I was kind of I'm not going to lie. Like because a baby that small doesn't need right. more than 3 4 ounces in yeah. one sitting. Cuz I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, that's I was like, why didn't I ever think of that? And then I realized why I never thought of it because it's dangerous. You would drown a baby. Yeah, you drown a baby with, with formula. Um, so I would think that she was just kind of like, this Negro really has this baby attached to this big bottle because this game is that important to him, and it's the term the that term that important. It's more important than the caring of your to your kid. No. Yeah. And that's why for me, I'm like, it's immature because. You're an adult male who has produced and made another person. Yeah. And yes, this is a video game that you appreciate, but. But still. 
it's not more important than like if that ba- if something had if that baby had aspirated because of the way it was sitting and couldn't breathe had regurgitated it and got choked in the nose and that baby died for the rest of your life you're gonna have to live with the fact that a video game was more important to me than making sure that my child was safe while it was drinking milk yeah well, a video game that's formula. not gonna go any anywhere yeah. that that's that's how i think of it as a mother as a woman as a partner so I don't condone her like pulling her camera out, but we're in a pull camera out society first anyway. So that's the defaulted thing you're supposed to do. Yeah. But it's not okay. So I have um, a really interesting perspective on this because I'm going to be full transparency, right? Like I did not do, I don't think I've done well for varying reasons, any of the children's paternity leave that I took, but I especially didn't do well in the first one. Um, because last one, I thought it was just like, yo, I got, oh, I, forgot. I, got, I snapped. Oh, I got three, I got three months off. Yo, straight vacation. Y'all. Yo, yeah, I'm vacation is here. Are you going to tell the whole thing or do I need to tell? No, I mean, I, so basically, and I'm not, I'm not going to make excuses for myself, but it was my first paternity leave, right? This is the first time I'm going through this, but it's, 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 it's it signifies uh, my maturity um, and how far I had to go, how far I had to come, like how far away I was from being right. Like at the father I am now, like I'm, I'm able to, to discuss it. Normally I use it as a teachable moment when I do discuss it because it's because I'm speaking to someone who's asking me about, you know, paternity leave and, you know, they may be dealing with um, these certain emotions or they may not be vibing with, you know, their, their woman or their wife or whatever. So the audacity to not vibe with the person who just pushed another person out of them anyway. Well, I mean, it's not, there's no way you can ever as a man, um, be a more sympathetic figure than a woman who's gone through pregnancy and given birth. Right. Like no one would ever even let you finish what seemed to be like oh, a case for it. Like people would be like, bro, get out of here. And rightfully so. Um, but at the same time, I do think it can be tough, uh, especially for a man who hasn't gone through it before, uh, because you're supposed to be here to support someone and you don't quite know how to, because that person doesn't quite know what they're going through themselves. Like it's, it's just a very emotional and, 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 and rocky time more so for the woman obviously yes but for i mean for dads as well so um you know there are times when i when you know i got worked up uh when you were pregnant i think with sovereign because you were go you were dealing with things i was on the road i was traveling a lot um and we would have some phone calls and it just it seemed like anytime you were speaking to me <laughs> like i was i was agitating you um, and I you were. and I was a problem, but it, like it, there would be things I would have to call you for. Like it's not like me just like it was just I would call you to check on my wife, and it was just like my the mere name David across your phone was like oh my god yeah so because <laughs> you got me pregnant, you were the reason I was in that situation. Don't okay. you dare! No, I'm just because you always I, try to. I'm, I'm not I'm, I mean downplay how you get someone pregnant no uh I mean mm-hmm. okay sure but anyways so uh I I did not handle the first uh paternity leave well because I thought it was just like yo the baby the baby's no, let me finish the baby's gonna be sleep Jess gonna be sleep we had like 10 things in the house. Like we, we, we didn't fill this house out till like after the second kid. But, um, so I spent a lot of the time, what I thought was free time playing video games, um, watching on my phone, mm-hmm. watching t- TV and stuff. Uh, and yeah, she blanked on me one day and I don't remember, I don't quite remember what you said. There was a lot of, I said, are you on vacation or are you on paternity leave? There's a lot, a lot of four letter words. I lo- <laughs> like, I don't. I don't go off. Like, oh, yeah. I get upset, but like me actually going, I don't go off. That's not my yeah. personality. And it was, it I was went off on him. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was justified. And I had to lick my wounds because it, 
to me, it was like, I was coming at him, like, it's just coming out of nowhere. Like, out of nowhere. I didn't know you felt this way, <laughs> but I had to, Bro, I just pushed I, a person out of me. I had to, um, I had to sit back and really think about it. Like, you know, and it was, it was, it was actually really embarrassing. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't, uh, obviously not my finest moment as your husband, as kid's father, um, just as a person. So, um, that, that is actually what started me trying to be more uh, conscious of when I play and how frequently I play. It is still a really good release for me, for me, mm-hmm. because it's, it's a couple of things. One, it's a video game. Um, I can control it as opposed to going out and playing pickup. I don't really have a whole lot of control of when the games start, when they end. Uh, but then it's also basketball, which I, I genuinely enjoy. Um, but it was like, yo, this actually took me away for my main responsibilities and I didn't notice it, which was the scary part. Like you, like you were kind of saying when you kind of get lost in addictions or, or things that you're really into. So, um, you know, it was one of those like shitty lessons you have to learn. You have to kind of go through and learn to see where you need to be better. So, and the reason why I tell that story is because, um, I don't want people to think I'm just sitting here like, oh, well, you know, I play video games, but I would never do something this egregious. And while I don't think that what I did equates to this, um, I know a lot better now because of, of my errors back then. Um, and I hope that this dude um, can can recognize. No. I, I mean, I hope. Because he, he kept playing. He did keep playing. While all this is going on, and that's that's like the biggest thing, like. But I mean, just like you had to say something. I mean, you didn't say it like the first day I was playing two K for a couple hours, right? Like it took some time. But I'm sure he's been playing before two K holiday hit. I appreciate the fact you said two K holiday. I really do. That means a whole lot to me. Look at you. Um, yeah, it's just bad. I mean, there's no way. This I'm not trying to defend it. Uh, my only hope is that it can be better. And it's a newborn, so he's got a lot. He's got the rest, <laughs> rest of the baby's life to, to make up for it. But yeah, it's bad. Um, and you know what's crazy is, so last Friday, it dropped. The game dropped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played it for like maybe 10 minutes. And normally I would have, like, because it dropped at mi- midnight Friday, I could have played it. I would have stayed up, got in like two, three hours, been groggy all day Friday, tried to play in between work or whatever. I was just like, I'll play it next week. So even that, so it might, my, my video game phase, it might be coming to an end because. It's not. You've said it before. No, I said it. it might be. I didn't say it is. Because 2K, 2K is different. 2K has always been different. When 2K drops, I'm like, I'm all about it. And I've played maybe like. You 10- stopped taking the day off, which I'm thankful for. I did used to take the day off, didn't and I? And I would be, I'd be like. Oh, man. Is it because it's 2K holiday? Y'all, I'd be so upset. I'd be it, like, this. People legitimately, but I think it. I think a it's lot of it is called, cultural. It's literally called Tuka Holiday. I think a lot of it's cultural because for me, the idea that people would take a day out of work in anticipation for a video game every single something that year they want to do doesn't make sense to me. People take their birthday off. Does that make sense? It's the day you were born. You're celebrating your life. You can't do that after you get off work. No. Uh-huh. You can. I never. You take my birthday off. I don't take my birthday well, off. What are you talking about? But I think I'm just. I think I come from a more productive people. More productive. Yeah, I think culturally. More productive people. I think culturally, culturally my people. Africans are more productive I think than maybe than black Americans. I think maybe Ghanaians might be more productive in terms of hmm. like recreate. Like we don't. I, like historically I, or mo- in modern times? This is just me, my assumption. Cause I, I'm asking historically I'm or not, in modern times? I don't know Ghanaian men a lot. Maybe modern Ghanaian men who are more Americanized hmm. play video games. I'm sure some of my cousins play video games. I asked you a question. Are you saying historically or more modern? Historically in, in what, what time frame? Are you frame? saying like Ghanaian people, Ghanaian, Ghanaians? Just only, in general, historically, are more productive than Black Americans. Is that what you're saying, or are you saying more modern an, observations that you've seen? This is an seen? assumption that I'm making. And I'm asking you, which is the difference in culture. It's, I'm asking I'm saying you, it's a culture thing. Maybe 
black Americans so are more course, likely to recognize recreational and relaxation. So throughout the course of history is what I'm I asking you. I haven't been you. throughout the course but of history. I'm just asking, but you, you study history. So again, I'm asking you and I need you to stop ducking this question. I'm are not. you saying historically or are you saying in a more modern sense since you've been I'm alive? I'm saying this is an observation that I have made based off of. And what's the context? What the are the context what? of the, the, the generation of Ghanaian men I've been exposed to. So you're saying more modern. the generation of, of black men I've been exposed so to. So since you've been and alive has, is what you're the saying. Dist- the difference has to be an American culture. So what you're saying is what I'm hearing is that since you've been alive, the observations you've made. Mm -hmm. So that, I don't know why that's so difficult for you to say. I wasn't truly understanding your question. Okay. I thought you were just saying over the course of time, Ghanians are more productive people than black Americans. And if that was the case, no, I know some very lazy Ghanians. They don't play video games. So do I, but it doesn't matter if, if you're lazy, then what difference does it make? Is American. No, I, he's, you're, that's not the only one I know. Like, I know Ghanaians outside of you. You're not, like, my exclusive window into Ghanaianism. <laughs> okay. Um, but, no, nah, I was getting ready. I was, I was getting ready to come for you if you were going to say, like, just in general, like, throughout the course of time. Is that, like, time. a black defense thing? Were you, were you thinking I was going to say black people are lazy or something? That's actually what it sounded like you were saying. That's not what I was which, saying. I was basing it's, it that, well, that's what my it's, own personal experience. That's what it sounded like. The men I'm around, and I—that's why I specifically said culturally. No, it doesn't I think, matter. I think the Ghanaian culture doesn't prohibit recreation as much as the American culture does. This is not black or white. I think this is just culture to culture. I'm bringing color into it because you're a black man. Okay. I think American culture, and I think this is this is generic for most of the world i think yeah. there are more leisureness is more Leisure. american you don't always have you could just even if i say something wrong you could just Did you do you, see this you do this too i'll say something that's not all the way correct and you'll correct me so i don't know why i can't correct what what is what is what is the issue why can't i correct you i'm very because i'm fascinated you will by say this bontanical <laughs> that's <laughs> And you use leisure. You use the wrong form of the word leisure, and I corrected you. I said leisureness. <laughs> Is that not a word? <laughs> it doesn't matter. All you I had mean, to. I just. But it doesn't matter. You were corrected, and you correct me. Because you always correct me at ill times. Like no, one time, I corrected you one while we're time speaking. We went to urgent care. I'm but, sick. And I said I was feeling nauseous in front of nauseated. the doctor, and he was like nauseated, and that just made you look like an ass. That like doesn't, this uh, woman is here sick, and you're taking the, you're you're more focused on correcting her English than the fact that she's sick and just trying to express herself. So one interesting choice of, of examples to use. Uh, I mean, come up with another. example. No, I'm just saying yes. Of course, you would use that one, but because um, you because obviously you didn't know the correct way you needed obviously, to use it. Damn it, my phone fell. Oh, your phone fell. Don't be getting comfortable because you're about to cut this. Because we're about to break out the boxing gloves. Look, Obviously, I was sick and I was just trying to express that's how not, I feel. You weren't, you didn't use, you didn't m- misuse the word because you were sick. You misused it because you don't know the right word to use, which is what I was trying to inform Are you, you saying of. saying I don't know the English language and I don't no, know No, I'm just saying you right don't know. Nauseous and nauseated? You don't know which word to use in which context, which was clear because you've done it, you had done it multiple times. And you were more concerned about the context than the fact that I was sick. No, I wasn't because I was there with you. Number one. So if I wasn't concerned about it, I wouldn't have been there. So please don't. So again, I don't understand why it's okay for you to correct me and I'm not you, for me to correct. It does, you say it things doesn't matter. incorrectly that it's, it's like, incorrect. I secretly know you're saying that in, on purpose. Incorrect is incorrect. You've always, he says botanical garden. Incorrect Yo, is incorrect. Botanical? <laughs> botanical. David, it's a botanical garden. <laughs> <laughs> you I can't like, get him to botanical. He, is, he still doesn't know how to order his eggs. He will say hard over fried. I can't and he I don't needs know why. To say fried over hard. I don't know why, and but it doesn't matter. Ma- even today, this was literally today, and I was like hard over fried. That's what I said. I said no. You said you. I said no. It's fried over Fri- fried over. Uh, hard. Uh, uh, see, what is it? What me. is it? I see. Fried over. It's hard. fried over hard. But he kept saying hard over no. fried. And then the and last I time I told her. him gently. And then he was like, that's what I said. And I, I wanted to be like, 
I wouldn't be telling you the correct thing if you had said it the correct okay. way. And, and I, that's probably why your eggs were messed up because you kept ordering them wrong. No, I ordered them right. Dudes just didn't know how to make fried over hard eggs. Anyway. They got it right at the at the last spot we went to. Anyway, you can't you can't handle being corrected is the issue. Neither and this can is you. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, or I you can. would not stay bontanical. That's different. Or you'd be able to say fried over hard. No, I just forget. Because it's so rare that I go out and order them. I usually normally make them myself. I don't know what I don't have to say. I'm order I'm cooking myself fried over hard eggs. I just make the eggs. And I'm the same cat that just sat here and told people what kind of shitty husband I was when my wife was pregnant and had our first kid. I can handle being corrected. Okay. I'm corrected very frequently. Very you often. You can handle it. Yes, I can. You can't. And which is why which is why you always deflect and give examples of how you no deflect see, too. You're literally doing it right now. Literally. Because I'm not so gonna this let is, you say that I deflect when you also deflect. You do deflect. All right, let me ask you this. Honest question, and then we'll cut. Because yeah, I don't want to see this. Out of the two of us, who is more likely to be receptive to constructive criticism within the first couple of days? I mean, you. Thank you. But that doesn't. Thanks mean, for not. Thanks. Th- thank you, because girl. But that if doesn't you had mean said I you, don't take constructive criticism. No, but it's you all don't, about delivery. You don't handle delivery. Shouldn't matter. No, because you can't handle delivery. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Because even when I try to deliver stuff to you nicely, you still take personal offense to it. What do you mean? And then you go into your little corner. Um, there's a difference between. So that's why sometimes I don't even tell you things no. because I already anticipate what your response is going to be. You anticipate, but you don't know. So there's because a I difference. Do know. No, you don't. Uh, there's a difference between Yo. delivery. Somebody recommends some counsel. There's a difference between delivery and the message being fair or not. So your tone could be, you could be gentle as could be, but if what you're saying isn't fair and I don't necessarily agree with it, then yeah, I may react. But we still we still also have to give people the space to react, right? Like, if you say something, your opinion on something, like, why is it okay that you get to express your feelings and your thoughts, but I don't get to express mine? Like, I can't control how you deliver something. Why do you feel like you should be able to control how I react? Now, you got to trust, as the man you're married to, eight years next month, that regardless of how I respond initially that I have the emotional maturity and intelligence to come back later and have a discussion with you, which I would say nine times out of 10, I do. And you should know this again, I'm not eight years, eight this. years, the next month, 12 total. So, but that's just, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to give you some perspective that I'm, and I'm just curious, like, why do you think you get it's OK for you to express things how you feel, too, but I don't get to react how I want? Like, does that even seem fair? I'm not saying it's not. OK, but you're just but you call me out for how I react to things. Um, and I just I'm just curious why you feel like because it well, like we'll do it when we're when we're arguing. You'll raise your voice and then I'll raise my voice back. and You'll be like, don't raise your voice. At me. No, don't. <laughs> don't, don't raise your voice I'm, at me. I'm literally matching your energy. Don't, no, that's no, that's raising your voice. It's not matching my energy. It is. Energy. But anyways, I love you. <sighs> do you? I do. I love you to death to the moon and back. There's nobody else I would have sat here and argued with for the last 15 minutes. I would just throw my head and be like, cut. We need help. I need help. Uh, whatever. I need help too. Can we talk about Nick Cannon? We're at an hour and thirty five minutes. You wanna talk Are about we? Nick Cannon? Yeah, I do real quick. We'll do um Extended vibes. Yeah, let's do that. That still sounds like a condom brand to me, but okay. I'm about to call Trojan. Yo, so uh this is like three out of the last four episodes have been an hour and almost forty minutes long. So we're gonna end here. Um this week. We're recording with guests. So I don't know when the episodes will drop, but they'll drop like within the next month. We're not going to drop them like after we record because I don't have time to edit. <laughs> I don't have time to edit all those at once. I like we should do an episode in between each episode. Yeah. Well, that's why I didn't want to release them all at once because you said that last year. You were like, yeah. I still like to have us in between guests. Because I know the podcast that I listen to, I don't like when they have guests on. 
I'm not no. saying y'all won't like it, but okay. It, it's not as much of a conversation as this sure. interview. So yeah, it's, it's different. And that's not what people are. People are coming to hear you anyway. No, great, uh, great, great, uh, great comment. But if you need a couple of days to mull on that. <laughs> no, I've already. I want to give you the space. I've already decided. I want to give you the space to respond. As the executive producer, I had already decided that that's yeah. what we was going to do. So I'm glad we're in on one accord. Um, Hope you all had a, a great Labor Day. And uh, why are we talking about Labor Day? I'm just saying, I hope they had a great Labor Day. It was the last holiday. One is the last, like. We've recorded since Labor Day. Have we? Yes. It was the last episode after Labor Day? Labor Day was like two weeks ago. Oh. Well, I still hope you all had a great Labor Day because there's not another paid holiday off from work till like November. I think it's Thanksgiving. So, no, Columbus Day. I don't think. Some people get it off. Well, I don't. It depends on your employer. I don't think I get Well, we might get it off. If we're gonna get Juneteenth I think off, I think we get. I think the schools are closed on. <laughs> I don't think I'm on off. Columbus Day. I might take it off, but I'm. I'm not. It's not being given to me. Okay. Um, Y'all in barefoot. She is barefoot. I asked her to put some some shoes on to cover up them. Jones, as y'all say up north, but uh, we How appreciate far? you guys. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Apple, Spotify, Google. Tune in. Tune in. Um, again, uh, stay tuned. Stay close to us because we're going to be having a couple of big announcements at some point. I don't know when, but they're going to be huge. Going to be colossal. Mar a Lago huge. Mar a Lago huge. And as uh, Angela Yee said, Rush Vibes as you know it. <laughs> Did you see the tweet? Before they announced, you know, Angela Yee's, Yee's leaving the Breakfast Club. No, she is. To yeah. do what? Uh, she's going to have her own show. On the radio or a podcast? Yep, nationally syndicated. Oh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yep, so she put out a I tweet. I didn't realize she was, um, she could carry her on her own. Yeah, well, she has her own podcast called Lip Service. I mean, everybody has their own podcast. Well, but she's, it's hers. Okay. And she, I mean, she's got uh, co-hosts. Isn't but she fairly new to the Breakfast Club? No, nah, they're, they've. She's one of the, she's an OG. I believe so. When she started with Charlamagne. I believe so. Yeah. I don't know why she's always seemed like new. Well, recently they haven't because they've they've kind of gotten so big. They're not like that's not like their main thing anymore. I mean, it's like kind of one of their their staples, but like they're all like like a lot of times Envy won't be there, but Charlemagne and Yee will be there, or Yee won't be there, yeah. Envy and Charlemagne will be there. So maybe that's why she's not a she's not. Yeah. On, so it might be I'm why you're thinking Breakfast that. Club consumer though. I'm not Charlemagne is. He didn't do it for me. I, yeah, so many people say that that I talked to. It's his voice. His voice reminds me of someone else, and I didn't like them. I I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, I I appreciate what he's been able to do in the in the media and space. I don't think that I like the hero to himself as the god. Oh, well, but anyway, uh, con congrats to her. I'm happy yeah. for her. So uh, so before they announced it on their show, she put out a tweet the night before and said, "The Breakfast Club, as you know it, is no more." So I got everybody like speculating and whatnot. Um, and of course, it was a ploy. They all were in cahoots on it. And then they, they dropped the news the next day. So, um, Well, I hope she can carry on her own. I'm sure she will. I wonder why now. I wonder. I think she's always wanted to since, you know, they, they had gotten to a certain place. And, you know, I encourage anyone and, and will always salute anyone who bets on themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the bosses at, at iHeart supported it and said hey this is what we want to do for you so Congrats. why not yeah that's right all about growth what is she is she latina Gross. she's uh chinese and, and black I believe, is she i think okay hence ye as the last name <laughs> i thought that was just like a screen name Ooh. Stage um name. stage name yeah so yeah we out we'll see y'all next week um we appreciate everybody's been rocking with us and um stay safe Share yeah. with a friend. Send us your couples therapist recommendations. <laughs> yeah, send us your thera therapy recommendations. I'm probably going to cut like the last 20 minutes from the episode anyway. But, you know. Really? I don't know. You think we should keep it? I don't know. We'll watch I'm, it. I'm, I'm in a season of transparency, so. I don't want my business all the way out there. Yeah, my, mom, my mom will watch this. I don't want my mom. Okay. Your mama can know where you're falling short. Maybe you're falling short. I don't fall short. 
I'm not that tall. <laughs> You're right about that. So we are out of here. We'll see y'all next week. We love y'all. Peace. Yeah. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now.